Uh, the thing about Shakespeare, the thing that separates Shakespeare is ninth grade lit, we're, we're still introducing the book, uh, is the language. Uh, you don't think about that with any other playwright that I can recall. You don't think the language is why people go to hear it or see it, but that's what we have with Shakespeare. Uh, because we just said the language is so big a part of, of even the acting, you know, you find out where things are. So it's called early modern English, it's not old English. Um, you'll probably call it that at some point. And we read Shakespeare, that old English. I, well, I think everybody knows what you mean, but that's technically, it's, er, it's modern English. It's just early modern English, not middle English. You couldn't even read that without a, you know, a dictionary. You couldn't read old English at all. It's a foreign language. So we, it is called early modern. You need to know these terms, blank verse. We went over that AP yesterday because it's on the AP exam. Blank verse is unrhymed iambic pentameter. You know what iambic pentameter is? Did she, did he, did he, did he it's, a it's a meter, it's a type of meter. Here's an example, this is from Shakespeare. This is from this play. Um, a little touch of Harry in the night. That's a silly line, but it's, I've taken it out of context, but that's what it says. Think about it, listen to it. A little touch of Harry in the night. That's, that's what iambic pentameter, iambic pentameter sounds like. It's ta da ta da ta da ta da ta da We read, we wrote sonnets, um, and I had, I had nobody, maybe, maybe a handful of people, actually write 14 lines of all iambic pentameter. Um, I gave credit for less than that, but it's really hard for some people to hear, meter. It's ta da ta da ta da ta da ta da 90% of his plays are written in iambic pentameter that's not wrong. We call that blank verse. Uh, next year you're gonna read. Um, you're gonna read uh, Paradise Lost by Milton. It, it's written in blank verse. Most of the great long English poems are written in I, I, uh, blank verse because it, it's it's the most common and the, the 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 language or the meter that most re represents common talking. We, we kind of naturally talk in an iambic rhythm, which every other syllable uh, is accented. Um, but the plays, 90% of them, 90% of each play is probably blank verse, but that leaves you 10%. So what's the 10%? Well, all the commoners speak in prose. The word prose comes from prosaic, which means ordinary or common. And then and, the verse is spoken by the Yes, the nobles speak the poetry and the com. So uh, uh, Henry V, he can do both because he has a very interesting background. You'll find out about him. He grew up hanging around ordinary people. You know, while dad was running the country, he would slip out to the pubs and he got to know a lot of common people. Um, and so he, he actually made him a better king. Um, I think. Because he could, like, relate that's to right. the I think any leader, if you don't know who you're, you're leading, I don't think he can be very successful. And the only way to know people is to, to spend time with them. So uh, I think the best leaders are people who lead people they understand instead of just lord it over them and tell them what to do. But they speak prose. Some of the plays have sonnets. I mean, all the plays have sonnets in them at some point, and they're rhyme couplets. Usually you'll finish a, a long speech with two lines that rhyme. Um, because it gives it a kind of a exclamation point. And the pros are, are spoken by the commoners. There's a lot of puns in Shakespeare. There's a lot of wordplay. Um, um, yeah, I, I can't think of one right off the top of my head. It'll come to me because they, you have them in Henry V. I mean, but, like with Juliet calling, um, what's his name, something with an N, Romeo. Romeo's friends. Yeah, yeah. like a, a something name. Would that be like a pun? Like, would that be something they'd laugh at? Um, well, it's, it's an insult. But a, a pun would be, oh, let me okay. think. Um, um, uh, please, give me a minute, because it, one will come to me. Well, but you know how puns work. It's a word that sounds like another word, or it's a word that's um, usually that's, it's, it's a completely different Here's another example of, of the language. Um, unfamiliar meanings of words. The word nice, 
The word nice means friendly, affable, but in Shakespeare it meant small, tiny. Like I'm going to make a, you know, a, something nice. It means unimportant or small. Uh, and the word, the order is reversed. Uh, it's kind of like Yoda in, in Star Wars. Uh, you know, he puts the verb first and the and the, the noun second. But but you'll see, in order to create the the rhythm of iambic pentameter, sometimes you have to invert the words. So a little touch of Harry in the night. You also learned this one, I believe, last year. This is not iambic. This, this is iambic, but not pentameter. Um, whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near between the woods and frozen lake, the coldest evening of the year. That's iambic. It's not pentameter, because there are not five iams there. They're not ten syllables. But uh, it's it's iambic. You hear it, ta da ta da ta da ta da. It's almost like a like a galloping horse or something. Um, but anyway, you'll see that in Shakespeare the way it's it's re kind of reorganized. Um, all right, we're almost finished. Uh, Henry V was written in 1599. You need to remember that. Um, it's it's a book about war. Like, what else is new? Yeah, you know, everything we've read this year has been about war. And if you turn on the TV right now to any news station, 24-hour coverage of war. Um, Jesus said there'll be wars and rumors of wars. This is the human condition. Um, but this is a, that's why this book is valuable because it tells us some things about war, and we're we're that's in the news every day. So we learn something from a book written 400 years ago about something that's happening right now. Um, it is one of his most popular plays. It's the fourth part of a tetralogy. Uh, the tetralogy deals with the royal house of Lancaster. And there are the four plays, Richard II, Henry IV, Part I, Henry IV, Part II, and Henry V. The, the plays Henry VI are about Henry V's son, but it's not considered part of this tetralogy. So, um, if you're going to read one, you probably need to read all four of them. And I've, I've read them all. We read them in college, and I really enjoyed them. Because it was history, it was war, it was intrigue, political intrigue. Henry V's father was not the nicest guy in the world. I mean, Henry V's father, yeah, Henry IV, was not the nicest. He was very political. He was very, um, in fact, he, he, he put this guy in prison, and he died there, Richard II. And before the Battle of Agincourt, Henry V asked God to forgive him for what his father did to Richard II. Nice. Because he's, he may die, and you know, don't want to die with that guilt on you. So it it's wasn't really. His fault, right? What? It wasn't his fault. Not Henry V, but you know, it was his father, the sins of the fathers visited on the children. So he was saying, please forgive me. I've tried to kind of make up for it. Um, but all that's true. All the. The history part of that is true. Wait, uh, like, oh, in parentheses, those are the four plays. Yeah. Okay. Richard the second, Henry the fourth, part one, part two, and then Henry the second. Almost there. I hope we can squeeze it in before we. No, this is a lot later. And that, in that interest, it's still interesting to me that next week I'll meet you Monday, but I won't meet you again until Wednesday. I do, I do see you three times. You, your core classes, you only meet three times next week. They're from 90 minutes each, but you're only going to meet. So I only see you three times, and I think I may have mentioned it last. This week and next week is a package deal. This is what the entire year next year would look like. One blue week, followed by a gold week, back to blue, over to gold. Um, if they go with it, and I think they probably will, and um, they might tweak it a little bit. Yeah. So like last, I think it was Tuesday, we had that like, dance and etiquette thing. Yeah. Like if they, do, if they do that next year, what will that be? Um, that'll be clubs or yeah. something like that, uh, advisory. Yeah. Okay. Just a nice 
All right, so we are finished. Uh, I want you <laughs> I want you to look at your book. We got about four minutes, three minutes. All right, take a look at your book. Um, we, I, we just did the introduction, so turn to um, the pictures in there. It might be helpful. Can we leave Brett some of this? I like pictures. Um, no, we've done the introduction. I've given you basically what's in the introduction is what I gave you on the oh, PowerPoint. Turn to uh, this. That's always helpful. You, if one of the first pages in it is a is a um, picture of, of uh, the family background of Henry. Um, the thing about Henry, the thing about Henry, he he wants to be king. He wants to be king of France. And so uh, here is, here is uh, his French descent. But turn to uh, page two, and we'll finish up with this. This is his English tree, family tree. So turn to page two, right before the text. And we'll, we'll actually look at that. Uh, one, one of the interesting characters that we don't see is Edward the Black Prince. Where is that? Yeah. This is page two. It's right here. It's like right there. Was he actually black? I think he talked about his, his armor. Oh, I thought he was like, oh, royalty. That's so cool. That's so cool. That's so cool. That's so cool. All right. Um, you will hear some of these names in the book. Notice Richard II is there. I didn't know that connection. But anyway, finally you see Henry at the bottom, and you'll see some of these names. You won't have to know much about it. We might go back to this from time to time. Cause, uh, Did Henry have any kids? Henry? Yeah. yeah, he had, well, I don't know how many, but he had one who became Henry the Sixth, and he wasn't a very good king uh, or effective king. I don't think he was a bad guy. On the right, you'll see... The parts that I'm going to need help on Monday as we start re reading this. We got an hour and a half. We won't read it for an hour and a half, but we'll, we'll so we'll need people. Um, obviously, Henry has the majority of the, the, the lines. We'll need a chorus, and then um, uh, I could, I, if I had time today, I could tell you the kind of the organization of the play. We'll start reading Monday. Your vocabulary is through Wednesday. A quiz a week from next Wednesday on it. I'll be grading your papers um, from yesterday eventually. Probably next, we'll get to it until next week. Wait, we'll see. The way it's Wednesday, I thought it was Tuesday. Uh, you don't meet with me. Never mind. Then, yeah. One class. As far as I know, Monday after school work for me. Alright. Um, Lee, I need to see you. I need to see you. Uh, yes. No, we don't have a But like I have to like life on the line. Yep. Same. Monday afternoon. I'll see. I'll see you Monday. Oh, it's recording. Do you need a piece of I can't do 